Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How was your weekend? How were things wherever you are in the world? I hope everything is okay. Things have moved around in here a bit. And um, so it might look a little different. And that's because I spent the weekend in here um, cleaning and reorganizing and repositioning because the new saw takes up a lot of space. And um, I was tired of having this freaking thing here so it's been moved to where the old table saw was I now have I don't know if you can see this I now have my um, scrap box here beside the bandsaw because usually the scraps that are in there come off of either the bandsaw or the chop saw so, just, oh. so it looks a little different can't see some of the stuff that's hanging up now which which disappoints me but it is what it is and I did all this because I'm getting ready to do um, I don't want to say a big project, but a bigger projects uh, that I hope to film very soon, and um, I need the space. Uh, because this weekend, this Saturday, I found heaven. Well, not really. I found a barn. I found a barn on a farm that's full of wood. <laughs> and um, I know I told you on Friday that I might take the camera. I did not take the camera. I chose since this was my first time going there and not knowing the disposition of the person that I was visiting, uh, whether I should just show up and put a camera in his face. So I didn't take the camera. I did manage to catch a little clip of it, which I'll show you in a little bit um, with my cell phone as I was leaving. But um, I, there was wood. There was wood for days of all kinds of species. And when I pulled up, you know, it's just a mountain farm cows, mud, those um, like canopy places to park tractors and stuff, and then this gigantic ancient barn. And I walk in and this ancient barn is just, there's like a wall of, of the super expensive stuff and then pallets of uh, the more common hardwoods. And on this side of the room, on that side of the room, the whole back of the barn was full. It was amazing. And uh, the gentleman who I, who I met, his name is Mike Holt. And um, I said, man, do you, do you cut all this? Cause there was this huge pile of sawdust. I was like, do you cut all this on site? And he goes, no. He said, I'm just a distributor. And so he buys this wood somewhere. I didn't, he said he has multiple mills that he buys from and he does it for woodworkers. And the interesting thing is, if you don't know much about West Virginia, I live in the forest. Like I live in the woods. West Virginia is super rural, but um, it's all new growth. Uh, essentially this, this state was clear cut, like, I don't know, 80% clear cut or something like that. I think like pre-1850 uh, or so, this state was like two-thirds forest. And by the early 1900s, it was gone. Like, no trees left. All this ancient old growth, just clear cut. And, uh, you know, it was the late 1800s. Everybody was moving west and wood was needed. And West Virginia was a source for wood and coal. So all the, all the um, train companies built, there were just train tracks all over West Virginia. Um, and we, we were basically an agricultural state, but it's hard. There's not a whole lot of agriculture in mountain terrain. Like there's cattle and sheep and stuff, but there's not really a whole lot of uh, fruits and vegetables grown here. Um, so we had agriculture, we had coal, and we had wood. And so in the late 1800s, it exploded and they just clear cut the whole damn state. And I'll put some pictures up. It was like, I'm telling you, gone, twigs. And it caused a whole lot of problems. Um, uh, in the early 1900s, there was fires raging because there was just brush. It was all new growth brush just would catch and spread for miles of fires. Um, flooding was horrific all the topsoil washed off from erosion and poisoned the streams all the fish were killed i mean it was just bad so bad that in the like early 1900s um uh, i guess the federal government passed some laws and bought up like a huge chunk of west virginia so we have the monongalia national forest takes up like a quarter of the state or something like that or maybe even half i don't know it's a huge part of the state that's now a protected forest 
And so, um, you know, all the railroads left and um, pulled up their tracks, except for the ones that were still feeding coal mines. And our economy collapsed because we now didn't have the, the lumber trade and we didn't have um, land for crops anymore because it was all just ravaged and they couldn't grow anything. And uh, our economy just went and then coal came and then coal left and so West Virginia has been on this this ride a couple of times of being in this very wealthy state to being nothing and I, so I live in a forest but there's no place for me to go buy hardwood like I can't go to the store to buy maple or walnut or cherry or any of those hardwoods that grow all around me um, because they you can't you can't cut it down here so finding this guy wow I mean, he had everything and it was so wonderful to walk in. I kind of knew what I wanted going in, but I ended up buying some stuff I didn't know I wanted like this. This was actually about a, I don't know, 10 foot board. I don't know how well this is going to come across on camera, but this is a piece of curly maple. It has so much amazing figure in it. And it was in his, um, uh, this piece of four quarter, by the way, four quarter curly maple was about 10 feet long. It was in his, um, kind of uh, number two bin or, or so, like the the not top grade. And he's like, I'll sell it to you for a dollar less a board foot. And I was like, well, I can't let this board go. It's too gorgeous. So I picked it up, you know. I picked up um, a piece of walnut that he sold to me pretty cheap because it had a whole lot of heartwood in it, uh, sapwood. And then the main thing I bought was just a bunch of cherry. I wanted to, I want to make some um, some bedroom furniture and uh, I'm really, I really like the look of cherry when it's just naturally finished with like, probably I will use uh, either like a uh, non-tinted Danish oil or a shellac finish with wax. And I really like that reddish hue. So I picked up a bunch of cherry, picked up some walnut, picked up that. He gave me like a piece of poplar. He gave me an off cut of walnut, which was super nice. Like, here, just take this with you, you know. And uh, when I was leaving, he was, before I left, he's like, you know, he said, you, you contacted me last year. And he said, I watched a few of your videos. So he'd seen me. Uh, and he's like, you know, I think what you're doing is really awesome. He asked me how many viewers I had and all this stuff. And we talked a good bit. And then he showed me his wood shop. And his wood shop was, I was so jealous. I mean, it was just like all the super, the super nice powermatic tools. Just everything was laid out beautifully, big space. It was wonderful and super nice guy. He's like, you ever need anything? Just let me know. And I said, okay. So when I was leaving, he was like, you know, I took care of you, you, you know, cause it's kind of my thanks for, you know, for doing the show. And I was like, well, thank you. That, that means a whole heck of a lot to me to know that, you know, that he'd seen it, that he looked into me and that uh, what I'm doing here means something and that he was willing to, you know, take care of a fellow woodworker, fellow West Virginian. And uh, the best part is he's like maybe three miles from here, if that. Probably like a mile and a half as the crow flies uh, in a straight line. He's just over the hill, generally. And uh, so he's not very far away, and I am raring to go back. Uh, I didn't check to see if he had anything bigger than four quarter. I mean, he had some slabs that I saw, but I way out of my price range. They're all like these massive, beautiful walnut slabs that I just, I'd have to have a commission before I could buy something like that. But I need some, I, I would like to have some eight quarter or even bigger, um, uh, cherry to make some legs. Uh, so forgot to ask. I texted him today. He texted me right back. Like, yeah, I have some. And so I might go back soon. And when I go back, I'll take the camera. I promise. But here's, here's a little bit of the footage of the inside. Um, I'd love to have, I wish I'd have gotten, there was a corner of his barn that was like turn of the century, last turn of the century, um, um, farm equipment, like horse buggy, those like plow things to pull behind stuff. I mean, it was really, really, really cool. Like almost like a museum. So uh, I, I hopefully he'll let me film next time and I'll get you some good shots of it. But I'm ready. I'm ready to start making some good stuff with some good wood. I've never worked with cherry. I've never worked with maple. Um, so I'm interested. He had a bunch of other stuff like ash and sassafras even. I've never played with sassafras. Uh, beach and birch and maybe some elm and a bunch of different wood 
Uh, so I will definitely be going back to play with, you know, see what I like with the different woods because I'm still a novice in that regard, but it was amazing. Um, and then I came home uh, this weekend, the Sunday, uh, Saturday night. I stayed down here, cleaned more. Sunday I made a um, sled for my table saw. I put a picture up here and uh, worked on that for a little bit and had a really good time. Finally have a table saw sled. I never had one before because I never had a table saw that I trusted. <laughs> if I had built a sled for my old table saw, it would have weighed more than the saw and I would have tipped the saw over trying to use it. So there you go. It was a good weekend. And um, I'm thankful for all of you coming back and watching me and allowing me uh, the opportunity to have experiences like meeting uh, really cool people who give me free strips of walnut and such because they appreciate what I'm doing. And, um, and honestly, if it wasn't for you guys, I wouldn't have this workshop, you know, um, that miter saw is directly because of this YouTube channel. That table saw is directly because of this YouTube channel. Uh, that planer is directly because of this YouTube channel. So a lot of this stuff exists simply because you keep coming back and, uh, that means the world to me because this, this is a hobby I've basically had my entire life, but I've forgotten that I had it a lot of times. <laughs> and so, um, I'm ready to actively pursue it further. Thank you for watching. This video is long. I am sorry. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey Doc, wait! I want to ask you something. Today's random fact comes from Wikipedia. What is the largest state in the USA by area? Alaska is the largest state in total land area and water area. Despite being the second largest state, Texas is only 40% of the total area of Alaska. Montana is larger than every state it borders. Only Alaska and Wyoming have smaller population density. Huge state with nobody living there.